Hi, welcome to Ego Kokyoikuho. Um, my name is Mark Helgeson. I'm uh, actually I'm part of Gendai Business, but I also teach in Jido. And um, along with Brenda Hayashi Sensei, we are the English teachers um, in Jido Kyoikuho. And I'm very, very excited to welcome you to this class. Um, I wish we were face to face. I think we all wish that now. But we can learn a lot this way. And um, this class will be a combination of, of real time video when we're all talking at the same time and videos like this that you can watch at your convenience. I realize that with everybody staying home, maybe your mom and dad or some brothers and sisters have to be using the computer at times too. So. Uh, we want to make it as flexible as possible. Ego ka kyo If teaching is the right job for you, it's the best job in the world. And I am honored to have a chance to share ideas about how to teach in a more effective way, how to teach in a more interesting way and engaging, getting the students really into it. And I have to tell you, even though I've been teaching university for, for many, many years, my first teaching job was early childhood education. I was a preschool teacher. I trained as an elementary school teacher. So in America, sometimes we have two majors. I was elementary education, early childhood. So it's like Jido Kyoiku, uh, Yoji Kyoiku. So I love the fact that you that's who you want to teach. You want to teach children. And I'm very excited to have the chance to share some ideas with you. Okay, um, a couple of things just to get started. My email is markhelgeson at gmail.com. My Miyagi Gakuin, you know, ac.jp email got hacked, so I don't use that one. So please take a minute, stop the video if you need to, to write down my email address. And if you haven't done this yet, because I'm recording this a few weeks before, a couple of weeks before classes start, please send me your email. Send it, okay, on the um, subject line, the, the line that says what the meat the mail is about, just put Kyoikuho so I know what class you're in. And please send me your name in Romaji, Roman letters. Send me your student number and your email address. And if you're online, maybe send me your line address too. Mine is Mark Helgeson at line. Because um, we'll have to just see what we how we end up communicating uh, during this this the time that we're doing it distance. Okay? Um, today, you need pen or pencil, some paper. If I prepared a set of handouts that I'm hoping to get you very early in the mail to you very early in the semester, if you have those handouts, um, please prepare those, uh, get those. And you need, and this is a little unusual, a scarf, or if you happen to have one, a blindfold. Okay, we're going to do some stuff that's kind of unusual today. Um, and some origami. Now, if you don't have origami, any square paper will work. Okay? But if you could prepare that stuff, and maybe if you need to pause the video to go get it ready, and then we'll all be set to go. Okay, we ready to go? Now, I want to start not by talking about English. I want to start by talking about Japan, because you know Japan. So I'd like to suggest, let's do two Japan tasks. The first task is about Japanese history. Okay? And you can read it, it says on the screen, how many periods, period means jidai, 
How many periods in Japanese history can you remember? Please write them in order. You've got about five minutes. So start with J Jomon, which is the earliest one, and all the way up through Rewa. How many periods can you remember? Go ahead and turn off the video while you work. Okay, are you back? How many did you, did you get? Now, this is not meant to be a test. If you want to know the correct answer, here it is. But I don't really care how many you got correct. If you, if you want to check, pause the video so you can read that, but I'll keep going. Um, that was just to make a point. And now I'll make the second point, and then um, we, we'll talk about what it has to do with language teaching. Um, when I say these are Japan tasks. Maybe all of you know origami because you grew up doing origami. And do you all know how to make a crane? Sort of. Yeah. Probably. Okay. Now here's where the challenge comes in. Because if I said, okay, make a paper crane, make an origami crane, that wouldn't. There's there's no point. And you, and you probably have not done this for many years, right? Um, now, this is blindfold origami. That's where the blindfold comes in. And so what I'd like you to do is, if you have a blindfold, use that. If you don't, use a scarf. If you don't want to do that, just close your eyes and take your origami and you can't see it, but you've made many, many paper cranes and try to make an origami. Again, take a few minutes. Um, go ahead and pause the video and see how you do. Okay, now you're back. I'm sure it was difficult. But I'm sure you probably succeeded. Yeah, you made a crane. Actually, I didn't make this. Nakamura-san and the, the uh, Jido um, uh, Fukushan made it. So thank her, thank, thank you to her for that. Um, now, you're probably thinking, is my English teacher crazy? I mean, what are we doing? Listing Japanese periods. And and um, doing blindfold origami because it's to make the point about English. Which of these tasks was like learning English? Take a minute, think about it. Try to come up with two or three answers. Again, pause the video if you need time. To What you were doing with the origami is learning by doing. What you were doing with the periods is just something you memorized years and years ago and bringing back the memory. What you do with origami is you learned origami by actually doing it. And that's how people use learn English. There's a French proverb that I like that, and this is interesting um, because you're young. I don't know if you even know this word in Japanese. Can you see this, this guy? He's a metal worker. He's making, I don't know, horseshoes or bowls or knives out of steel or iron. Do you know the Japanese word? It's kajia, like, you know, from fire. The English word is blacksmith. And the French proverb says, the way to become a blacksmith is to be a blacksmith. If you want to be a blacksmith, you don't read about blacksmithing. You do things that blacksmiths do. Yeah? And if you want to be an English user, you 
do things that English users do. Can you, can you ride a bicycle? Um, probably most of us can. And how did you learn to, to ride a bicycle? Did you read a book, you know, how to ride a bicycle? No. No. You probably <laughs> crashed a few times. You practiced. You probably got some coaching, probably your mom or your dad or an older brother or sister helped you, showed you how, and you practiced, and you probably made some mistakes, and you practiced some more, and you practiced, and you got better. And eventually, wow, no problem. Eventually, you probably said, now can I ride my bicycle with no hands, right? You were learning by doing. And that's the big change in Japanese English education. Starting this year in Japan, there's a new curriculum in elementary and junior high and senior high. Yeah, it's called the can-do curriculum. And all of the language points, it's not just grammar, it's what can you do? What can you use English for? Now, a little bit of background. This class is going to be very practical. We're going to look at what you actually do in the classroom. But you need some of the background information. That's what Brenda um, Sensei was doing last semester. That's what we'll do this semester and next semester. Here's a point that I'd like you to understand. There are two kinds of knowledge that we talk about in, in language teaching. One is descriptive knowledge, and that is knowing that. And what traditional language teaching in Japan has been describing the language, explaining the grammar, translating the vocabulary, you know, talking about language. What we need is procedural knowledge. Procedure means to do to do something, like the can-do. It's knowing how. So think about riding a bicycle. Can you describe how to do it? Not really. You just get on and move your legs and, and you do it. And the reason, you probably have not made an origami crane in many years, but you were able to do it because you know how. Your body knows how. Okay? And learning by doing and can be noticing, noticing while using English. Yeah? So we're going to use the grammar. We're going to use the vocabulary. We're going to use the language functions. But we're just going to notice them. Notice what we're doing. Okay, today was our first class, and um, it's going to be a little shorter because there's a follow-up task where you're actually doing, doing a lot more. Um, there's a website called Flipgrid, yeah? Uh, Flip, Flipgrid, F-L-I-P-G-R-I-D dot com. And um, two things you need to know about it. It's free. And you don't need to download anything. Check your Unipa or check your email, and there will be a, an email from me. Um, you might have already seen it because I'll probably send it. I'll send you your login information, how you access our Flipgrid page, and your password. Okay, so check your email for that. And then go there watch my video. I'll do a very short video. And then think, okay, here's my questions for you. Why do you want to be an English teacher? I'll tell you my, my reasons, which I hope you find interesting. Um, why do you want to be, I'm sorry, why do you want to be an elementary school teacher? Um, and I, I should, second question, 
What makes a good teacher? You've probably had some great teachers in your life. I mean, one reason many people decide I want to be a teacher is because some, some teacher believed in us. Yeah, and that's powerful. So what I'd like you to do is um, go to Flipgrid, watch my example video. Now, I'll have two videos on there, okay? The top one is just instructions, how to use Flipgrid. And the basic idea is you, you go to the, to the big plus symbol in the green circle when you're ready to record. Press that, it will record, okay? Two extra hints. Please put your name. When you first open up the video part, there's some icons, some pictures at the bottom. Choose the one that means words. And please write your name in Romaji at the bottom. Okay? And if you want to add uh, emojis or any other symbols, add those before, before you make the recording. Okay? And then make your, your record it, and then you have to hit next and it will ask you to take a selfie. Do that, and that will let you upload it, okay? And um, then after you've uploaded yours, please look at at least three other students' videos. And after you watch them, record your reaction. It can be short, or you can talk about their ideas, what's the same in their video as in yours. Now, of course, if you're the first one or two people to put up your video, you can't watch three other students' videos because they're not there yet. So come back in a day or two. The Flipgrid part, you can do on your own schedule. You can do it right now if you want, but you can do it anytime before our next class. Okay? Um, oh, the last thing. This is a little tricky because... Um, yeah, this class is for people who want, who are in Jido Kyoiku, but who want to get an English teaching license. Now, I know you want to be an elementary school teacher, but the Monka Show doesn't license um, English, el elementary school English teachers. So you need to get a junior high teaching license, which means you'll need to do student teaching, Kyoiku Jishu, in junior high. So we're going to try to walk walk a line down the middle because little children, elementary school children, learn differently than junior high who are not adults yet but they're young adults and so we'll talk about both kinds of students and how to, ways to teach them and I will do my best to make this useful and interesting and relevant. Um, at whatever level. Okay. Again, thanks for being in the class. I'm looking forward to, to it. And um, thank you. Goodbye for now. And stay healthy.